Pastoralism, a story of success against all the odds. It starts small in the family home, at the heart of a remarkable culture. Then on the move across the vast drylands of the Greater Horn of Africa. It's an extraordinary way of making a living from an environment that looks impossible to survive. The livestock trade from the drylands is a multi-million dollar business, a significant slice of the national economies. Most of the milk, meat and animal products for the region are produced by pastoralists for the growing towns and villages. These animals are trekked across the forbidding plains and sold to middlemen, then trucked off to get fattened up. Many will end up on plates in Saudi Arabia or further afield, Egypt, the Gulf, even Iraq. And the demand for meat is growing. Yet this multi-million dollar trade runs itself without any real support. Inadequate government investment and poor services, even basic needs like getting water, are a daily challenge. Nuama aka ona na gaita na gane ta kamari ola nu rantu rantu gan kana soda chu gan kana ju soda chu jira. Nukulensa umma waga tewa waga fide male wani nu rene ben. Akatan in Kamnu, Wagan, which is Iran, Loja Don, Dumalakatan, living Kamna Gufu Raiti Sudan then. There are ways to cushion the shocks, like this one. Women's cooperatives in Burana, Ethiopia, collect grass when it's plentiful and build up haystocks. But climate change means drought has become more frequent and weather patterns more extreme. There is less time to prepare and greater pressure on what's already there. Water is rare in the drylands and extraordinary effort goes into getting it. Here it's like digging for gold, months of excavation before striking rich. This well provides for thousands of people and animals and is owned by the clan who dug it. So why is one of the most productive economic groups in the region so neglected? Pastoralists are flexible. They take opportunities as they come. So if there are better opportunities, they will change with it. And they're changing over time. I, my family is nomadic pastoralists and I see the changes within them over time in terms of uh, what a better uh, life they would want, the, the kind of goods they keep in their house, uh, the luxuries they would like to buy whenever their livestock prices go up. So in my view, whether they should be supported or not, I think any state would support all the livelihood systems in this country. And um, people say, oh, pastoralism is over-supported with the relief. Probably the amount that uh, we support uh, with the pastoral livelihoods when they are under shock is much smaller compared to the, all the subsidies we put into uh, underwriting uh, the debts of, uh, you know, co uh, coffee farmers or tea farmers or fertilizer, uh, you know, subsidized fertilizer. 
finding new ways to make old traditions work more effectively helps. Like using mobile phone transfers to open up markets here in Cagliado. Pastoralists have been among the first to take advantage of this innovative service in Kenya and they use it to help cope with drought. Kuna wakati labda una ngombe mingi na nyasi hamna. Tunapiga simu kwa marafiki zetu ambao wako Kichinjula, alafu tunawaita wanakuja kununua zile ngombe na wanatumania pesa. What happens actually is that uh, as a result of climate change and also as an improvement as a response to the improved technology uh, pastoralists are using diverse ways and means of accessing the market. The policy framework itself has not created a conducive environment for that continuous marketing for pastoralists. Weathering change in the remoter drylands is more difficult, especially where mobility is restricted. National parks and wildlife reserves limit the seasonal movements of pastoralists. Sometimes different ways have to be found to make a living. In the cultural villages, we are doing the dances. We get uh, small money and bring it to other community. We are improving our living standard. We cannot depend only on this ecotourism only. We are doing farming. We are also keeping small livestock. We are doing both of it. Yeah. It is like that we are milking the cow morning and evening. So we can milk at the side of the ecotourism, at the side of the pastoralist and also at the side of angro farming. Communities like this know the environment intimately and are best placed to look after it. But far from the reach of government, are often shut out of central decision-making processes. Protecting the environment with the help of pastoralists makes more sense. Here in Ethiopia, a move to reclaim the rangelands. The invasive bush and trees are stripped out and pasture allowed to regrow. Only the young and weak animals can graze. Once they are allowed to regain their, their status in terms of control over the natural resources, then we will be able to uh, you know, lift our heads up high and say that yes, this particular uh, system of pastoralism is, 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 is now back on the right footing. Oh. Problem with pastoralism now is before the border, there were no much borderlines. You will be talking about pastoralists going across to Kenya, for example. Before they had a broader area, they had a wider area to graze. You will be shocked with the number of pasture that are available but pastoralists cannot access those areas because of the increased conflict that we are experiencing. Governments, it seems, are most likely to notice pastoralists when they clash over scarce resources. But harsh security operations and badly conceived responses make matters worse. In Karamoja, northeastern Uganda, the army occasionally confines huge herds in an effort to prevent insecurity in neighboring districts. It's an environment that encourages disease. Mobile animal health workers help the community try and keep the animals fit.
With so many pressures, the pastoralist system can collapse, which becomes much more costly than supporting it. A decade of food aid to the Karamajong has provided no solution where timely support and investment could have. And a livelihood lost is very difficult to regain. This Samburu community in Kenya recently lost cattle in a security crackdown. What's the name? When they get here, it's a rally. No one is there. 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 Destitution starts like this. It can't get any worse for this displaced Tokana community. Without livestock or help, the only option is to turn to charcoal burning, which needs to be done in a sustainable way if it is not to harm the environment. And there is no benefit here in living next to a tourist haven. Basically, every society has a vulnerable people, and within that group, it is how then uh, that society takes care of these vulnerable people. Um, traditionally, you would say pastors supported each other through the clan uh, system, but once we have become a state, then it, uh, uh, which levies taxes it becomes the responsibility of the state to take care of those particular vulnerable people. Choices are having to be made, especially among the younger generation. Different ways of earning a living include finding a wage or setting up business. John Mundes from the Ethiopia-Kenyan border moved to the city and sends cash home. <laughs> It is the tenacity of pastoralism that provides the best argument for support and investment. In Somalia, devastated by conflict for nearly two decades, the livestock trade is still worth millions of dollars. It keeps the economy going. Helping to reverse the odds means investing in pastoralism by recognizing the importance of pastoralist livelihoods in the drylands and using appropriate policies and practices. Better for everyone to keep one step ahead.